that soil behavior is the main source of uncertainty for offshore infrastructures. It's very important to collect the geotechnical data and to try to get to know the unknown. Our next speaker works for the OE Lab, where he is offshore geotechnical engineer and scientific researcher specialized in data-driven geotechnical design. And he will provide us insight into how these uncertainties are quantified and managed. We are very pleased to welcome Bruno Stuitz. Thank you. Um, I work for the Universities of Ghent and Brussels, and together with Ceres, we have joined forces to provide R&D services to the wind industry in OELAB. And characterizing geotechnical data is actually a very important, important aspect of geotechnical uh, R&D, because when we build a wind farm, we're trying to go from a soil sample taken offshore to an actual wind turbine construction built in the field. And contrary to some components in the system where we have a lot of control, such as the structural steel or the manufacturing of blades, soil is an aspect which is generally not under our control. We have to live with what the site presents uh, in terms of geotechnical setting, and inevitably there is variability associated with that. If we have variability, we need to characterize the site. So the preceding speaker talked about geophysics. As geotechnical engineers, we're trying to gather geotechnical data by performing intrusive investigations into the subsoil. Geotechnical data needs to be fit for purpose, and that means that we need sufficient data and appropriate data for constructing offshore wind turbines. And to put things into perspective in terms of sufficiency of data, I've drawn a chart where you can see the scale of a CPT, a cone penetration test, versus the scale of a full monopile. And you can see that the CPT is just a tiny blue dot compared to the large red circle representing the monopile. So you can ask yourself, is one CPT per, per foundation location, which is the standard today, is that really sufficient? A lot depends on the variability at the site. Appropriate data is needed for offshore wind turbines because they are very different structures from the offshore oil and gas platforms which were traditionally designed and for which most geotechnical codes and standards were developed. So that's a little bit of a paradigm shift compared to oil and gas. Because in oil and gas, we try to design platforms which were mainly safe against extreme loading. So we didn't want the platform to fail, and we didn't care so much if things were a little bit overdimensioned. So generally, our design methods were overconservative. In offshore wind, there is a different focus, because offshore wind uh, turbine structures are highly dynamic structures, and the structural dynamics govern the response. The fatigue limit state is one of the most important limit states in the design of offshore wind turbines. Instead of having conservative design methods, the offshore wind necessitates accurate design methods. And given all of the variability that we have with geotechnical data, accuracy is not something that comes easy. So there is an incentive to have the right parameters for accurate geotechnical design. And instead of looking at the ultimate strength, how much load the soil can carry, we are now more interested in the soil's stiffness. But the stiffness is a difficult parameter for soil, because soil is a granular or a plate-like material which behaves differently depending on its stress level that you impose on it. So the soil stiffness, the amount of deformation you get under a different load, needs to be characterized, and it needs to be characterized preferably for the condition that we're going to load the soil at. In that sense, most of the offshore wind turbines impose rather small loads compared to oil and gas platforms in terms of operational loading. So the small strain stiffness is our main parameter for geotechnical design. How can we characterize that small strain stiffness? 
Well, we can use add-on equipment to the conventional CPT test. And in a seismic cone penetration test, we put a seismic source at the seabed at a certain offset from our CPT rod. And then that seismic source emits waves into the sub-bottom, which are received at locations deeper down the cone rod close to the cone tip. From the travel time it takes from the source to the receivers, we can infer what the wave propagation velocity is. And there is a physical mathematical relation between the small strain stiffness and that shear wave velocity. There is a problem, however, that seismic cone penetration test is a rather expensive test. And doing it at every foundation location would actually be quite prohibitive prohibitive in terms of cost. So we are seeking to correlate that small strain stiffness with a property which is easier to measure. And the comb penetration tip resistance is a parameter which is captured at every location and is generally fairly cheap, relatively cheap to come by. So at OELAP, we now have a database of over 2,000 small strain stiffness data points, which can be correlated with the cone tip resistance. And then we can see, for instance, that clays generally have smaller stiffnesses than sands, and also higher cone resistance indicates larger stiffnesses. There, are, there is still scatter in those correlations, but Overall, the cone tip resistance is a good proxy for um, calculating the Gmax property. And if we have a Gmax for the subsoil at every foundation location, we have the necessary input to use in structural dynamics models. In the wind soil and soil twin R&D project, we're seeking to improve the modeling of soil structure interaction between monopiles and the soil. And we don't only do that by looking at geotechnical survey data, we're also looking at the behavior of structures as it was measured in the field. That behavior is a very important source of data. These are large data volumes, but when you analyze them properly, you can feed that information back into the foundation models to get better approximations of the stiffness for future developments. And our aim is to actually provide assessments over a large fleet, actually the entire fleet of offshore wind turbines in Belgium. In the soil twin and wind soil R&D projects, we are following parts of the conventional process, so we're going to do more advanced soil characterization and numerical modeling of the foundation. But we're also closing the loop by looking at the monitoring data and putting that alongside our predictions and updating the predictive models with our in-situ monitoring data. That approach has already shown its merits. And in the chart, you can see how the bending moment evolves in a profile of water over a layer of sand and yellow and a layer of clay. And the as-designed response with API, the oil and gas standard, is shown as the long dashed lines. The measurements are the dots. And you can see that the, uh, the as-designed line is actually over-predicting the measured response by quite a lot. If we instead use a stiffness-based method, we see the lines with the short dashes, and we see that these fit the data much better and also for different load levels. We're going to do that back analysis more extensively on more structures and hopefully come up with better integrated structural models. So to conclude, geotechnical design is challenging because of the variability of soil. But geotechnical survey data is only one part of the equation. Closing the loop and using field measurements to update the models is something which we have to do to make our models better for the future. Thank you, Bruno. Um, we received one question. Uh, when a CPT site investigation is performed without a seismic cone, how much uncertainty do you have on the dynamic soil parameters? Then it all comes down to the data set of uh, Gmax measurements that we have and its correlation with uh, the cone tip resistance. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the scatter that we typically see, then it's like plus or minus 50%. Uh, although as soon as you do seismic data, 
and you start gathering data for a specific soil unit, yes. things, uh, well, the, the variation will obviously be reduced because you tie that uh, measured data together with your database of yes. existing data. Okay, thank you.